So first, I just want to kind of say a couple things because I know that people want the test net upgrade and, and the um, and I know that there was a ascend over to Ethereum that blocked the bridge and people want it all working again. But I also want to just say that, you know, we should all keep in mind that the test net's great, but our real goal is getting this all on mainnet. And, and that's really what we're focused on doing is to get this on mainnet. And uh, so we had hoped, I had hoped, I think last, uh, meeting i said you know i think it's going to be a couple days and what happened is chris who's on the call um actually put in some pieces in the ethereum bridge we got the of course i think i mentioned last week we got the hardening pieces in that i had done earlier but then um now we had in this ability to um i think last time I gave an update. I said, I don't know if we'll get it in, but it might be this ability to uh, send currency definitions over to Ethereum. And I think that was like, I was pessimistic that we were going to get that in, in the release, but that that was coming in, or maybe I was optimistic that we'd get in. I don't remember exactly, but basically, so we, so uh, we did get in Chris, has tested and confirmed and we've got the other side now after a discussion um we did get in the ability to get currency definitions sent over to ethereum now some of this stuff is okay we're waiting to get the test net upgrade for some of these things because they're such a big deal and really we're really focused on mainnet not like if we know that it's something we should just put in and it takes, you know, we're going to wait a couple few days, even if that keeps happening, it's the right decision for the project, whether it, you know, makes everybody feel like, Oh, it's taking longer right now. It's not taking longer. We're actually, things are going actually quite well and they're kind of exciting. So, um, so the latest thing, uh, Chris and I spent some time talking this morning. It's all clear and we're leveraging uh, stuff that exists on Varus and some previous planning that we did on the Ethereum bridge to enable um, exposing Varus currencies to Ethereum and Ethereum currencies to Varus in an easier way and in a more complete and actually very cool way. And so here's the current thing, the current thing that works now on the testing on you know the part where we're testing and i'm going to make a change today that we're going to get in for tomorrow and hopefully we're going to be in a position to release tomorrow but waiting on you know final verification um i, I don't mean to mainnet i mean to test net i'll tell i'll talk about mainnet after this um but what works now is so if i've got a currency say um you know Mike's currency on Varus, then I can now send the Mike's, I can export Mike's currency to Ethereum. And that's an ERC20 token on Ethereum. That works on the version we're testing now. And, and so what that means is every single, that, that means that Varus is the best launch platform for ERC20 currencies. Because you can make liquidity baskets. You can make centralized currencies that you mint. You can make DAO-based currencies. You can make all sorts of different kinds of currencies on Varus. And there are going to be more that I'm going to explain that you can make, which is really cool. And then you can just send them over to Ethereum. But not only that, all this works already between Varus and all of the PBAS chains. And you can go more than one hop. So you could launch a currency on a completely independent PBAS chain that was launched from Varus as an independent project. And that currency can be exported to Varus and then to Ethereum. And now it's an ERC-20 token. So all currencies that are on Varus can now in this upgrade on testnet and in what we're testing now, just they have the ability to just be ERC-20 tokens. So if you want to go make an ERC-20 token, it's like the 
way better than you know hiring people to write the contract for you and do something because you don't have to pay people to write anything. It's already part of the Varus protocol. And so you can and you can launch it with a Kickstarter like refund model and you can launch it as a fully functional liquidity basket and it can be your currency, you know, my business currency, and then you can expose it to Ethereum. And it's also an ERC twenty. And you know, maybe we never write the Rosetta Stone integration with uh with Coinbase. Maybe we just tell them, hey, just list the Varus on Ethereum, you know, because Varus will be on Ethereum, of course, too. But not just Varus. And not just the, the currencies we choose, any currency anyone ever wants to launch on Varus from any ID or on any PBAS chain is just by default an automatic ERC20 token whenever they want it to be. So that's what that works. That'll be on the test net when we upgrade. Um, but even cooler than that, well, that's pretty cool. So so we talked about how we're going to expose currencies from Ethereum to Varus. Well, and the thing is that, you know, none of the code to do that was ever written on the Ethereum side or any app side or any of that stuff. Except that we have all the code to do that on the Varus side because I wrote all of that. So, so we have the ability to make defined currencies, launch currencies, do all these things. And so why not just do it a little bit differently in a way that makes a really cool feature, okay? So how about if we define the currencies that we want to map to Ethereum currencies? What if we just define them on Varus? So what if I want, you know, the, the uh, foundation owns the BTC ID. So what if the foundation says, you know what? We're just going to make Ren BTC BTC. So they launch BTC and they specify that it actually maps to this contract on Ethereum. Means nobody can make BTC on Verus. The only way to get BTC after you do that is you actually have to send it over from Ethereum. Uh, the Ren BTC would then appear as BTC. I think we actually got our BTC, so we might use our BTC. But the point being, anyone could define a currency mapping from a currency on Verus to a currency on Ethereum. And when they do and export that to the bridge, then anyone on Ethereum will be able to send that currency to the mapped currency. Meaning, if I want Mike currency to be exactly equivalent to USDC, then I can actually just define the Mike currency definition as a mapped currency. And now people can send Mike over from Ethereum, but it really is USDC. And if I send Mike to anybody, it, it, they can just send it back to Ethereum and it'll pop out as USDC. But they can see that in the currency definition and it can't be faked. So it's totally provable. So no matter what the name of the or brand that somebody uses for a currency, it maps to another currency that could exist on Ethereum. Any currency that could exist. And so that is actually that we had talked about doing that before with the other person working on the contracts. And I had a discussion with him this, this morning as well. And um, so it looks like that's how we're going to move forward. And I'm thinking that we might be able to get that in maybe even by tomorrow so that we, when we do this test net upgrade, we can go both ways. But this is something really like a big deal. It's, you know, forgery proof. And yeah, that's big no news. So no, so basically, every single currency on Ethereum can be used by any currency, you know, or any ID as just like their branded version of that currency. And so, um, all of the things that we've been discussing. In fact, where we are right now is basically all of the bridge functionality and all of the PBAS functionality 
is I, mean, I, I think all of it, except for just some minor stuff is done. And it's now just a uh, push to get, you know, all the T's crossed and I's dotted so that we get everything ready for mainnet. And this step, of releasing these things to testnet with this functionality is uh, is really like this is what we'll have on mainnet these capabilities and I you know I, I like I've said before I don't I don't want to I don't want to give dates because as soon as an actual date comes out or a target comes out then then it ends up being more of a negative than a positive but I don't think we're far from getting these things ready to go for mainnet. And that is what we're focusing on right now. And I really believe that we're not that far. Um, there's work to do. I know what the work is. We know what the work is. Anyone who can contribute in, you know, development, whether it's mining pool stuff to support all the merge mining and, and have more advanced mining pool options for the pool operators or, or, um, you know, I saw that, uh, so Tinder Gruel did a uh, uh, new explorer, and I don't know much about it, but that's that's awesome. Um, and I don't know if Oink is on. Let's see, he is. So um, yeah, I don't know about that, but anything we can get for more community contribution on development on any of this, I know Dude has done the uh, integration for for uh, login and. And I saw a dude was on, I don't know if uh, anything we can get for, you know, more app support for logging in, um, any people doing, you know, really good JavaScript developers who want to contribute, let us know. But right now we're kind of in this, I think of it as release mode. Whenever you're near the end of, a, of an actual release and it's really just about wrapping everything up, making sure you got everything right, making sure that you have all the testing in place. When we do this test net upgrade, it is the best launch platform for Ethereum currencies or really Varus currencies or any other. It's just that nobody really understands how much Varus currencies are better than Ethereum currencies. But it will be the best launch platform for Ethereum currencies as well. And it will be the best DeFi platform for Ethereum. It's also the best for Varus. And it also includes all the Varus ID cap you know, capabilities and lose your keys, keep your money, keep your ID, all these kinds of things um, that no one else has. But this testnet release is the first time that we're going to be able to say this is the best launch platform for Ethereum currencies. And there just isn't going to be a better one. And it scales. And remember how anytime there's a big launch on Ethereum, the entire Ethereum network clogs up and fees go through the roof and blah, blah, blah. None of that happens. We're just a totally scalable, unlimited scale, basically, launch platform for any number of different launches simultaneously with liquidity baskets and, you know, all sorts of other capabilities. And, oh, yeah, it's also just an ERC-20 token as well um, that you can do everything else with. So this mapping, the sending currencies back and forth, being able to have all Varus currencies on Ethereum and all Ethereum currencies on Varus and mapped to your own currencies on Varus it's just like a whole new world of what people will be able to do. They just don't know it yet. So I'm really excited. It's, you know, I, I hope we get the test net. We're going to have release testing by tomorrow. I'm sure of that. I think we're going to actually have release testing by today. I, uh, I hope we would have, you know, something that we could release to test net by tomorrow, but maybe it'll be the next day. I hope. Uh, and then, all of our focus is just working as hard as we can to button everything up, you know, hit every known issue, test and test and test. The more that everyone in the community can use this stuff, the more you're going to understand it. Try it out. Find out, you know, write stuff on the wiki. Contribute to, you know, any of the materials we have. Or just know, because if you know, then you're going to be able to help someone else. And you know, the more we have a core of the ability to spread this information and really understand it, it's getting time that that's going to be really needed 
And I see people asking, like, what's going to get people interested? Look, the thing that's going to get people interested more than any other thing is when this goes live, we literally have just a direct pipe with everyone's decision being what makes it possible, not no gate, permissionless, to, you know, a trillion dollar economy plugged right into the Veris network. No company saying anyone can't do it. So if XYZ person, you know, decides that they want to send over a million dollars in USDC, nobody can stop them. And if they want to make a, a bridge currency, or I mean, if they want to make a liquidity basket, you know, for their own business and have a currency of their own business's name, they can do it. And they can have an ID that is their business presence and they don't need to go to ICANN. They can just do all these things. And everyone in the world can do all these things. And they don't even have to care about Varus, the currency, to do it. But every time they do it, they have to deal, they have to use Varus. And so either Varus just goes way up in price because they're actually buying Varus, not not thinking about they're buying it because it's it's not like they're exactly paying for it. Um, but if people don't put money into their liquidity basket, then the price of Varus is going to be really high. And their liquidity basket is going to have other liquidity. So people are going to come and they're going to arbitrage until they decide that Varus is, you know, as low as they can make it. And then someone else is going to come along, bring some new liquidity in, and it's going to push Varus up, and someone's going to come in and say, I want to arbitrage, and they're going to arbitrage to push Varus down as low as they can make it. But they're, they're only going to keep pushing it down for so long, so low. That's all the, 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 there's just math involved. And I don't want to go through all the math because I, the last thing I want to do is say, oh, you know, Varus is guaranteed to go up or anything. But, you know, everybody should try to figure out the math at some point themselves before we launch. It might help you make more informed decisions. You know, I, it, it makes me laugh when people get on the on the channels and say, "There's no thought given to the tokenomics or the script or the coinomics." It's just it's just funny. I'm sorry, it's funny because it's like, yeah, it's a little deeper than most. Please take some time to figure out how the math will work when the system gets used for what it enables that people need. I would recommend that, but I don't want to be the one to try and. I can't, I can't be the one to explain it as I'm the dev right now working on all these things because uh, the last thing that I want to do is try to over-promote, over-hype, or make any statements about price really that much. But there is a lot of math involved that people might be interested in learning. Um, and so the, I think the biggest news that maybe people were not expecting is that within about a day or so, maybe two, I don't think much. I don't think much longer than that. We're going to have a new test net, and it will be the best launch platform for not just Varus currencies and any kind of crowdfunding currencies and liquidity baskets and MEV free, you know, DeFi baskets. But it's also going to be the best launch platform for Ethereum. Period. And and least the most efficient, least expensive. You know, it's going to. It's going to disintermediate a lot of developers writing just and, and oh and, and also um, as long as we get the Ethereum contracts audited, no one's going to have to worry about you know they write a new contract and now they've got to do new auditing. So, anyways, that's the update, um, and I hopefully. It, you know, creates a few questions and I'm here to answer any. And if not, that's okay. We'll just keep on working in our focus is main net, but there will be a stop at a really exciting stop on test net in the next day or two. Well, that is amazing news, Mike. And um, it's a quite a feat to, to have the ease of like mapping and being able to, to take that, like you mentioned, a pipeline. So um, thank you very much for that update. And I think that actually answered one of my big questions about how would it work that I've had for a while. And um, so inadvertently, just by creating the the tools there, you've just answered that question. So thank you for that. And um, I, 
I have another question. If anybody else has other questions, though, we can ask it first. Okay. So um, I, I'm just to clarify on that, on the mapping, it means that any, anybody's currency could, uh, like for the, for the Veris ID, launching a, a currency with the Veris ID, uh, you can map to one or more Ethereum contracts. Is that the idea? Yes, in a way, because you can either map to an existing cur Ethereum contract one to one, or you can make a liquidity basket. They're not the same thing. So mapping to a contract on Ethereum is really not the same as making a liquidity basket, because that is a one to one. Yeah, yeah, that's a one to one mapping, and you can have multiple currencies mapping to a single currency so multiple various currencies could be mapped to a single ethereum currency so like Wait, a club. Say, say that again say, yeah can so, you explain that, that what that means so like okay so you know i could make a club called exclusive club and uh i could make exclusive club currency equal a dollar by making it usdc or die but if you're going to come to my club you got to pay in exclusive club currency because it's not the same it's exclusive club currency on varus but it's always worth a dollar because anyone who has it can send it to Ethereum and get USDC for it. Okay, I see. Um, and, and, and I guess the other, so the kind of question I'm asking is about uh, the difference, I guess, uh, between, like, for example, a mapped currency one-to-one -one with an, ER, uh, an Ethereum token versus, um, let's say, on Varus, you have a, ba a liquidity basket. That would actually require a, another ID which takes some of those mapped currencies and uh, which are on Varus and puts them into the basket on Varus. Is that more accurate how that would work? 100%. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for asking, uh, sorry, answering that. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like you understand completely. That sounds correct. Still wrapping my head around what you said. It was like a bomb went off in my head. But basically, when you said it's the cheapest way of launching on Ethereum, if I'm understanding you correctly, that means it would cost 200 Varus to purchase the token, which would generate a token on this network and then also uh, on the Ethereum network. Is that a correct understanding? No, you're going to have to pay the network fees. So, yes. In a way, what you're saying is correct, but I'm going to add a little bit to it. So here's the thing. Right now, 200 Varus isn't more. It, it's not even close to what it would cost you to just get an Ethereum expert to put together a contract the way you might want it, especially if you wanted to launch a liquidity basket to compete with you know, some liquidity basket. That's going to be kind of hard. Okay, Varus actually allows you to do it, but you would need to make your own... Um, like. You could literally circumvent bridging by making your own development to go directly from Ethereum to a different contract than the bridge converter. Uh, wait a minute. No, it's tricky, but there's work that you could do. The point is that if you launch a currency on Varus, it's going to cost you, as you said, the amount it's going to cost. So if it's a you know, PBAS chain, that's more, but you've got a whole blockchain. And if it's a currency, then it's 200. Right now, that's where we're at as 200. If Varus ends up $100, and I know that a lot of people think that that's, oh, that's pie in the sky, but okay, keep thinking that. It's okay. Please do. Um, if Varus ends up $100, that's, you know, $20,000. Then it starts to, then, then what I said, it's not necessarily cheaper than deploying a contract on Ethereum, right? But at that point, Probably there's a PBAS chain where you can launch currencies cheaper. And then you got to pay a little bit to get it over to Varus. And then you got to pay the cost of an ERC20 deployment, basically. That's going to, the fee to send a currency definition to Ethereum is going to be equivalent 
to about, you know, an ERC-20 contract deployment, maybe times two or three. And the reason is because the whole protocol, it might actually not be times two or three, but I think the way that it's divided up, it's going to be like at least times one and a half, okay? But when you add in the cost of a Solidity developer, that just gets blown out of the water. This is just pennies compared to the cost of the high touch. How do I deploy a currency on Ethereum if I'm going to do anything special is what I'm saying. And so it's, e it's definitely the easiest way to do it because you're just going to have a command and then you're going to have another command to put it on Ethereum. No ERC-20, no fancy remix, no, you know, nothing, no coding, nothing. Um, so in that sense, it's going to be very easy. Right now, it's going to be cheaper because I don't think you're going to be able to find a way to deploy a currency on Ethereum unless you are the dev where you're paying, you know, two or three X the cost of deploying a contract. And so right now, it'll be cheaper. If Varus really goes up and up and up, it still might be cheaper because, you know, getting from, it's not going to be free to put a currency on Varus. It's all, right now, I think the, I think the low, the price of importing a currency on Varus, I think is set at 100 Varus. That's the current default. Because I think it's bad if we allow people to just put currencies on Varus too inexpensively because then I think it's go there's a cost to having a currency on Varus. And so, you know, it costs more to have a native currency on Varus. But I think having like half price of a native currency as an import for a currency, which is something we can set before we release, I think that's a reasonable price. And so there probably will be a time when launching an ERC-20 through Varus is not cheaper, and, and it might come soon, is not cheaper than launching it on Ethereum. But the reason that it will be more expensive is because it's just going to be so much better. And so that price will reflect that it's just better. So until Varus price catches up with its value, in my opinion, I mean, obviously I have opinions, uh, then uh, it'll be the cheapest, easiest way to launch currencies on Ethereum. But eventually I hope and believe that nobody will actually care about how to launch currencies on Ethereum because they'll care more about how to launch them on Varus. But that's my opinion. So I'm obviously biased. I don't know if that, hopefully that clarified something. Oh, it does. Definitely. Um, yeah. Well, I was just seeing it also as a way of saying, you know, easier, cheaper way of launching. Uh, but definitely the no coding part is incredible. Um, and then the audit, you know, you basically have your own. It's already audited. And that's a huge cost, as you mentioned. Well, yes, and then yeah, you yeah. don't even no, know how good the true. auditors are. But that's true. But we didn't audit. We're not. It's not audited yet. So here's what I'm thinking. As soon as Testnet releases, we can go and say the best ethereum currency launch platform we could say that i think it is right but i don't think we should talk about the auditing until we finish getting audited probably because then it just begs the question and then i don't think that we we could say the best and like least expensive or most economical being the cheapest is not always the best place to be in marketing it's often the worst place to be in marketing um you know, we will be the cheapest when we launch unless everybody recognizes what we are before we launch. Uh, and then we'll end up not being the cheapest over time, probably. But it, it is something we could, we could be, you know, the most, the, the, at, the easiest by far and the most economical launch platform for Ethereum currencies. That's a, I think that's a true statement. Once we get testnet out, Everybody can try it. They, if you want to launch a currency on Ethereum, you owe it to yourself and your project and your investors to check out Varus before you do. Well, I think this is a major selling point for consensus because there's going to be a lot well, of people walking around looking on launch it, and launching their projects. So yeah, Incredible. there are going to be two. There are going to be. I'm not even at all worried about the selling points by the time we get to consensus because I believe this stuff will all be on mainnet. That's what I believe.
So um, I, I'm not even thinking about, I'm not, I have no concern, worry, or panic about having selling points for consensus. I'm more trying to figure out how can we as a community, like, understand that we are where we are and help to create the kind of a uh, small growing wave that will be a tsunami by the time we get to consensus. And the way to do that is by understanding what we have now that we can say tomorrow or the next day when test nets upgraded about what this really is that will immediately start to get more Ethereum people's interest, maybe even veto leaks at some point before consensus. If we get to consensus, and we literally haven't been able to get this information out. And then it's like, okay, I'll be at consensus. We'll get the information out. And I'll feel really bad that we were just totally unable because tomorrow or the next day, we will be the best platform, easiest by far, most economical, and most feature-rich crowdfunding and currency launch platform for Ethereum currencies and others in Veris. Hey, Mike. Um, to communicate uh, better between us, um, could you relate the uh, currency mapping um, to the terminology we have uh, when you're talking about putting multiple currencies, uh, mapping multiple currencies to one currency and um, what fractional reserve currencies uh, and how they would interact? Okay, I'll try. So if you think about USDC.V that's been on testnet, that is only the same as USDC. It's always one-to-one. -one. The protocol doesn't ever try to do anything fancy except make sure that it's 100% collateral backed on the contract. That's it. There's nothing fancy or difficult to do. It's just USDC.V has an I address, and that is USDC. And when USDC is sent from Ethereum to USDC.V, the contract puts exactly the right amount in the contract, and it sends exactly the right amount to Varus, which then mints more USDC.V because it was told that there's that exactly that amount new in the contract. And there's no race condition like on um, Solana or, you know, there's like all the different things. It's basically, it's very simple, very straightforward. But it is, there is one currency on Ethereum that has already been mapped to another currency on Varus. Now, the way that that works, it's not at all like a, like a liquidity basket or a fractional currency. Now, uh, liquidity baskets and fractional currencies all happen on one chain at a time in on a PBAS chain, whether that's Varus or other PBAS chains. Because Varus is basically a kind of a master PBAS chain that when we go fractal will be the same as all the other PBAS chains, really. And so um, when you send USDC.V over from Ethereum to Varus, the contract receives the instruction to do that in the following way. It gets a transaction that must be carrying the currency you're sending. It must have that currency or it fails. So it takes that currency and it looks up your destination currency, which it has a table of, which is USDC.V. Because it knows that you're sending that to usdc.v so it puts that into the usdc.v uh, collateral and then it for it fo uh, forwards that on really just forwards it on after checking everything to varus because it's the varus protocol and then varus takes that and then mints that much usdc.v because it knows that that is controlled by Ethereum because in the in the currency definition there is a contract ID, an Ethereum contract ID that's on Verus. There is that already, and there is an indicator saying this is a Ethereum protocol currency which Verus understands. 
That's an Ethereum protocol currency. Okay. So Verus gets this import, which it proves using the cross-chain proving and everything that it absolutely is exactly coming from that contract and no one else and no person. It's just that code and no other code. It's provable. So it absolutely does. It prints out that much um, USDC.V. And now that's on the Verus chain. Now, somebody takes that USDC.V and they send it to Ethereum. Well, the protocol knows that that is an Ethereum currency with a system ID of Ethereum. So that is controlled by Ethereum and the collateral is sitting on the other side. So it burns it, sends the transfer over, and that releases the collateral on the other side. Okay. Now, if you think about that whole set of steps that I said, that is in the opposite when the currency is coming from Verus to Ethereum, it's opposite. Everything's opposite. And all of these relationships go throughout the entire multi-chain fractal network. It's not fractal yet, but when it's fractal, fractal. So all of these relationships go in and out for every cross-chain. And the reason we always know exactly where everything goes and how to do this accounting is our IDs. And since no other platform has IDs, I really suspect it's going to be exceedingly difficult for anyone else to do this. Let me just put it that way. And so what that means is a mapped currency is just like USDC.V, but it has a different name. So here's how it works. I make a currency exclusive club currency, okay? And I want it to be USDC. So when I define that currency, I put the information in it that gives it a system ID of Ethereum and a Ethereum uh, native currency type and a contract ID of the USDC contract on Ethereum. That's all I have to do. Okay, there might be a, an option that I set as well. And so I define the currency that way. And I export it to Ethereum because if I define it that way, I can't, I can't make a Satoshi worth of it myself. There's no way that anybody can make it. The only, if I define it that way, the only way I can get it is by sending USDC over from Ethereum to it but it's exclusive club currency not usdc.v so when i am in metamask and i got my usdc and i want some exclusive club currency now the bridge knows that every time we add a currency to the bridge it knows that it's got new currencies to that it can support so now i say i'm sending this usdc and then i'm going to have to choose to which currency I'm sending it, I'm not converting it. I'm just sending it to, or, or we might make it actually that the source is either USDC.V or the source is, you know, um, exclusive club currency. But on Ethereum, they're all the same. So when I'm on Ethereum, Exclusive club currency comes out as USDC and USDC.V comes out as USDC. But when I send it over to Verus, I can choose the destination currency out of the mapped currencies that are available. It's not a liquidity basket. There's no fraction. It's always 100%. It's a collateralized mapped currency. But there can be many currencies on Verus that all map to a single currency on Ethereum or in the future, other gateways, which allows currencies on Ethereum to have the most flexibility. I mean, on, on Verus to have the most flexibility. Does that make sense? It does. I, um, the only thing I am wondering is um, when mapping both something that's pegged USDC 
and something that fluctuates, potentially even itself a reserve currency to a brand currency. Um, I I assume there's in it, it there's intrinsic value in doing that, and that's something that can be done if I'm thinking about this right, right? Yeah, so um, if you've got, you could map SushiSwap currency, you know, or Uni, or any of these, you know, you could map BAP or anything to any other currency on Verus. So there's no limit on the currencies on the ERC-20s you could map. And so you could map any ERC-20 to any Verus currency. And kind of, I think, I don't want to confuse everyone, but kind of along the lines of what you're saying, you actually could map Verus on ethereum to another currency on Verus, because all the accounting works anyways it's just everything works so there isn't a limitation actually of what you can map but anyone looking at the currency definition or any wallet that wanted to you know make sure that they that it was as transparent as possible is going to be able to get to the bottom of what's mapped to what with no trouble at all transparently and so there's, you can't use this, this feature to fool people, is what I'm saying. But you can map currencies to any currency. And even if it's just for fun, I really suspect people will use this feature. You know, if anyone sees a problem with the feature, let me know. But uh, I don't. And, uh, and it's, it's, you know, it's like, who gets to decide the mapping of one currency to another? Well, no one, everyone. You know, because... It used to be that, well, you know, who gets to decide what is Bitcoin on Verus? And so we bought all these, and I think it's good that we bought all of these IDs that we can then use them for these core currencies. But the answer is who gets to decide is everybody gets to decide because they can have, you know, many currencies on Verus mapping to the same currency on Ethereum. And yes, you could use that to expose a reserve currency that's on Verus to Ethereum. And then to map it to another currency. But we're not doing this mapping feature Verus to Verus yet because it's really to solve the definition of, of, of currency on Ethereum. And I think it's, I, I don't see a big need for doing it PBAS to Verus yet. And if we ever need to, you know, we, we could probably do that too. It's just, I don't. PBAS chains are really fully functional chains. They're not gateways. And Ethereum is not fully functional. It's just, uh, it's just a gateway because it's missing so much functionality. And so it, what we're really doing here is we're putting more functionality on the Verus side to make it easier to use the Ethereum side. And it just kind of has this really nice kind of mimetic, you know, brand-oriented feature that kind of just drops out of it, which I think is really great. That's really all I have. Um, one last thing is that there will be a change for the people who are doing the release testing right now. Um, there's going to be a change coming, I think, hopefully, like, yeah, it should be today, short, like hopefully not too long, but I've got to do it after this uh, meeting. That's going to require one more reset of that release testing network. Um, and then we're going to want to get as much testing as possible uh, as soon as we can so we can just get this out to the public test net and have everybody using it. So that's all I've got. And when it does get out to the public test net, I'd really encourage everybody who's at all interested in these things to just just jump in and try to use it. You know, it, it helps to develop our muscle of being able to help people. We don't really want that on release testing as much because that's, got to go fast and be efficient but on when it gets out to the public test net if people are using it even if you're not super experienced and people need to help you it helps to teach people how to help people so it's all good so that's really all i have so thanks everyone that's really cool right now i was just um thinking about how uh, it almost feels like a really interesting 
ETF technology that you can create from Ethereum currencies as like um, probably one of the first utilities that people from that community are going to notice. You can definitely do that. So, I mean, figuring out a number of different kind of high value, easy to understand messages. Like we don't want to get into any terminology that forces us to go talk to lawyers. Um, it is fully decentralized and there's, you know, oh, and then the other thing, I don't know if everybody noticed, maybe they didn't notice that I'm not a lawyer and this is not legal advice. And I'm just kind of saying something that I, that I uh, noticed uh, recently, but um, the SEC or uh, I'm sorry, it was the, yeah, I think it was the SEC. Um, indicated that miners and stakers are going to be exempt from the classification of transaction processors for, um, you know, DeFi and things like, and AMMs and things like that. And the really coolest thing about that is we don't have anybody else. <laughs> we don't have people, unless it's a centralized currency, um, there isn't anyone else who processes those transactions. So, uh, so that's kind of really great for us, I think. But I don't, like, again, I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. Please let's not ha turn it into having legal discussions. It's just kind of cool that they, that they signaled that. So Very much so. So that's all. Um, I don't really have any other stuff. And, yeah, uh, Zoe, you're right that that does kind of make an ETF feature that you could basically you make you know, multi-currency liquidity baskets for any group of currencies. And the other thing that people might not know is that you can set the relative weights of all of the things in your basket, and we're not going to remove that feature. So that fe that's been a feature for a long time, but nobody, we didn't really promote it because we were thinking about removing it. And I think it was with all bits and uh, consilience discussions that we realized that it was, uh, that people would want to say, Here's my portfolio. It's got 12% of this and, you know, 18% of this and 10% of this. And, you know, it's got this exact ratio because it's the best weighting of all the different cryptocurrencies. And then following those people is just holding their currency, you know. And so it's like um, those features are there already. Like you can just go, go to testnet. I mean, I would say go now, but it's going to be reset in a day or two. So when it's when this is out go to testnet and make some you know let's do stuff like that because it works so lynn's asking about the dne cooperation and i've been just focused on this other stuff as far as i know i've heard from consilience things are going well but i think i probably would defer to consilience on that all is going well, and uh, we are finalizing documentation. We had a session today. We have a session tomorrow and a session on Friday. So we're pretty close to finalizing. Uh, Fluzy Source is asking, what's DNE? We can't really go back through over everything, but I'm, hopefully people will just remember. DNE is Digital Nation Entertainment. It's the uh, metaverse work that was near the end of last year that we started working um, with their different companies on. And, you know, as normal things in the corporate world, uh, things move at their pace. They're, I think they're not, like, slow corporate, but they're, like, they're more innovative corporate, but they're still, you know, there's a lot at stake, and, uh, and they're moving at their pace. And it's, so I'll defer to, Nick, or to Consilience, but as I understand it, it's, um, it's going well. Yeah, it's all going well. And obviously the metaverse has become more into the zeitgeist and the teams are working together and there's really good cooperation. And there are some exciting uh, developments that we can't talk about as yet, but um, will uh, involve uh, all of us. So I think, it's, I think it's something to be excited about. But as always, we want to uh, under-promise and over-deliver. Well, thanks, everyone. I'm going to drop off and try and get this... Uh change ready for deployment on the release testing network so everyone have a good day and and thanks and i hope to see a bunch of new people on the test net when it goes live thanks mike you too
Well, guys, I appreciate everybody coming into the meeting and showing up. If you guys missed it earlier, just kind of scroll up. There's some information about the uh, conference consensus, hotels, and some other stuff. Um, so that's kind of the hot topic we're working on and kind of be on the lookout with that with the test net. And I appreciate everybody coming today, and we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. And thanks again, guys.